thank you for being here, even if you don't know what is the, the presentation about. So, as, as you mentioned before, it's about uh, how 3D printing can be a, a good application for uh, adding value to plastic waste. All right. Yeah, okay, let's leave it like that. Okay, so um, today I'm here. My name is Pano Sakas. I'm a co-founder of The New Row. Uh, the New Row is a design and research studio based in uh, Rotterdam, which uh, works on projects uh, that focus on uh, how we can actually upcycle plastic waste into larger, uh, longer-lasting, and more meaningful applications with the use of uh, 3D printing. Um, it is um, actually it was founded by me and Fotini Setaki in 2015, and since then we've been working on several projects uh, with different types of plastics and different types of uh, contexts. It's not very clear here, but uh, we've been worked we have worked on like uh, refugee camps or on like uh, islands on how 3D printing can provide a solution for growing economy in these cases. And we have also worked with the plastic waste of cities, but also with the marine plastic waste. All our projects, uh, we wish to include awareness, educate people about the problems and the possibilities. We want to engage them with our products and our uh, method. And of course, we want to promote the innovation and education aspect of them. We have worked with, uh, we actually, all these projects are a result of collaboration with different stakeholders, so we work uh, with uh, organizations, institutes, environmental um, bodies, and, uh, and volunteers uh, that help us in uh, what we're doing. Uh, yeah, sorry. But I mean, yeah, okay. So we, the, the problem probably is known to everybody. It's about uh, plastic. We, we waste too much plastic. And we consider that plastic is actually a valuable resource that we just have to make a better use of it. So the idea is simple. So let's turn waste into products. So for instance, let's turn plastic caps into, into furniture with using of uh, robotic 3D printing. And you might ask, why would the robotic 3D printing or 3D printing would be a good application for, uh, for such a material like uh, recycled plastic? Well, first of all, um, it's a zero waste production method. Uh, I have to say here, given the fact that most of you probably know uh, more about 3D printing, we are working only with the FDM uh, 3D printing. Uh, so it's an additive process, so you don't produce waste. And in our case, uh, any uh, additional plastic that might be produced, we can continue using it in, uh, in our process. Of course, there are many, many options uh, for customization and uh, personalization. There are many opportunities for local production and local recycle. Uh, we're given the possibility and the opportunity to create a closed loop for uh, plastic material inside the cities. And of course, we can add value through premium design by using 3D printing uh, with this material. I will demonstrate uh, our concept through two broad projects of ours. The first project is called Second Nature, and it's about a project based on a marine litter, and more specifically about ghost nets. Ghost nets are basically uh, the deadliest trash in our oceans. They are made out of plastic. They are either made out of polyethylene, polypropylene, or a polyamide. So they can be a source uh, for our methodology. In our project Second Nature, we started with more uh, awareness objects, like uh, the 3D printing of, um, of a seashells. We use seashells as a symbol of uh, beauty and cleanliness of our seas. But we took a step further the moment we managed to actually make use of this material to also make some prototypes about tableware. And in this, let's say, in this bowl that's a prototype, of course, you can see that the shape and the form is a bit inspired by nature, but it's not only about ornaments and about appearance. It's also about like, uh, providing better support and better rigidity in a very unstable material, such as recycled plastic. So from a bowl, we can make vases or we can make other type of uh, tableware that could be part of the uh, of hospitality industry. The moment we managed to, let's say, um, control this material, we took a step further and we tried to scale it up. So here you can see um, one of our prototypes is a seaweed table. It is a table made out of uh, recycled plastic, but industrially recycled plastic. It's from a company called Plastics. 
um, that they are producing uh, polypropylene, polyethylene uh, from uh, reused uh, fishing nets. And in this, um, in this prototype, we have also tested, apart from a new material, we have also tested a new hybrid method. Um, we tried to reduce the printing time and the production time, so we printed the table uh, flat, and then we used thermal bending in order to actually bend um, the legs and shape the final table at the end. So, apart from materials, we're also trying to create methodology or design, let's say, approach to tackle and uh, control uh, the material and provide a better result. The second project, and the most important, and the reason why we are here, it's called uh, Print Your City. Uh, Print Your City is a project that we started two years ago uh, as a research project with the city of Amsterdam, and it's about printing uh, the public space with the city's plastic waste. Since the press release in last November, it has been nominated and shortlisted in several uh, competitions and awards. Uh, Fast Company included us in the top 10 list of the most innovative uh, uh, world-changing ideas for urban design. This is a video, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, so, some information about plastic, about plastic waste, actually. Plastic waste in Amsterdam, it's only the 6% of the total waste volume of the city. But at the same time, it's uh, almost one quarter of the total waste, I'm uh, sorry, it's 6% uh, of the total waste weight of the city and uh, one quarter of the total volume waste. So you see that the problem with plastic waste is actually the volume and not so much the weight. Uh, the waste stream, the stream of uh, plastic, especially household, is a very challenging. It's very dirty, mixed, and although it is um, divided in the uh, main six big uh, categories of materials, all, all of them thermopolymers, it still needs a lot of effort and a lot of energy to, uh, to turn it into a material that can be used for 3D printing. Uh, the process that we usually do it also in our workshop on a, in a smaller scale is very simple. First, you have to separate the types of plastic um, because every type of plastic has a different melting point. Then, of course, you have to clean them, then shred them, and then test whether in the extrusion they can be used for 3D printing. Apart from the material, of course, after we 3D print, we have to test whether uh, the material is good enough for the applications that we intend to use it. And uh, that's why, together with TU Delft, we've been uh, we've doing tests on tensile strength to see also how the material works on, on, on every direction. Because with 3D printing, it's a material that doesn't, ha is, uh, doesn't have the same properties in every direction. As you can see, the weakest point is like the connection points of the lines. And last but not least, it has to be recyclable. It has to be a product that we can again recycle. And with our methodology, what we have achieved to do is that we can locally recycle uh, very easily. When uh, the product is finished or need to be replaced, we can shred it again and, and break it into small pieces that these pieces can be fed back into the extruder and be used exactly as a material for printing. After the material, of course, uh, the design aspect comes to make the product uh, feasible. So we use parametric design, but also like optimization in order to be able to make products that are uh, uh, in, uh, strong and, and stiff, um, visual, visually good, and can last in time. This is our first prototype. It's called the XXX bench. It's a double side uh, rocking bench made for the city of Amsterdam. Of course, it's not a real proposal for a public space furniture. It's more like a, a demonstration of uh, what can be done. And it actually weights uh, 50 kilos. It's the amount of, of plastic waste like two Amsterdam is produced in a year. After our first prototype, um, which you can see part of it, you can see it also in the 3D printing pioneer challenge. Um, we, we've been continuing working with the city of Amsterdam in order to see what other applications can be there for the public space and, uh, and the using of uh, large-scale 3D printing. Apart from using it for playgrounds, for uh, tree plants, or other accessories of the public space, we can also accommodate more involvement for the citizens. So we can make use of the customization and the personalization possibilities that the technique gives us in order to create something that can uh, uh, fit to every need. What, how, 
where you want. Furthermore, what we are doing, we are also uh, working on, uh, with, with companies that we can actually uh, upcycle and recycle their own waste. So we provide, apart from actually having furniture that we provide, we can also have a premium service where we can actually provide furniture with your own uh, plastic waste. This, of course, has a big impact in the environmental footprint, in the actually waste, plastic waste footprint of the company or of the city, uh, according to the project. In CO2 emissions, in the kilometers that are gained by doing everything locally, and, of course, um, in financials. At the end, this summarizes what we want to achieve. A closed loop that starts from plastic waste, from single-use plastic packaging, but then becomes a raw material for the city that can be constantly fed uh, according to the needs of the city. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. I don't know if you have any questions. I am here. I can answer for you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah? All right. Yeah. Well, the, the most expensive part is the 3D printing. Because, yeah, because it's actually the material is um, around 10 to 15% of the price of the total product. Uh, the printing time, especially for the large object, the printing time, it actually determines uh, the biggest fraction of the, of the price. So this bench uh, takes, now takes 15 hours to print. The table that we showed you before, the green table, took uh, four hours to print. The moment we can optimize and reduce the time, and maybe also like uh, uh, the facilities, the, the equipment can be improved, this price can go down. But uh, about the, the plastic, uh, plastic waste, at least in the Netherlands where we've been working, especially in the area of Benelux, there is an industry there, so we can directly buy from them uh, different sorts of materials. So that's not the most expensive part, uh, but it's also very challenging, yes, true. <laughs>